Module Federation and TypeScript is what we're going to be looking at in this Blue Collar Coder video. I'm Jack Harrington, and I get this question a lot. How do I make TypeScript work with Module Federation? And the problem is that TypeScript works at compile time, and Module Federation works at runtime. So if you don't have the code, how can you check it to make sure that all the types check out and everything's cool? Well, I've come up with a solution for it, but caveat mTOR. I'm not a TypeScript expert. And at the end of this, if you are, you might be like, your conclusions were all wrong. Okay, fine. Well, if that's the conclusion that you come to, then drop a comment in the comment section down below and we can have a look at it. Or even better, show up on the Friday live stream and give your input there. Or even better, better, fork the repo yourself, make the changes, put that in a comment in the section down below, and then we'll all get a chance to look at it. In the meantime, let's see what I came up with as we jump into this week's code. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the React starter kit that we've been using for other module federation examples. But in this case, I've upgraded it so that it manages TypeScript. So I'm gonna go and create a new directory called MF TypeScript. And then within that, another directory called packages, because we're going to do a mono repo. Go into packages, we're going to, to deget the main branch on that TypeScript starter kit. And the first one we're going to create is TS remote. That's going to hold our remotes. So let's back up a directory and then go and bring up VS code. All right, and now we can see that we got TS host and TS remote underneath packages. Those look good. So let's first start by creating the mono repo, and that means creating a package JSON in this parent directory. And we'll first set it to private, and then we'll bring in workspaces, and we'll say any project within packages is going to be part of this mono repo. And they'll bring in two helpers, concurrently and WS run, and those are gonna help us run the start command in each one of our projects. So that includes TS remote and TS host at this point. Okay, and then the next thing we need to do is change out the package name because they're both the same at this point and that would cause workspaces some grief. So let's change this one to TS remote and this one to TS host. Just so they match the directory names, make it easy on ourselves. So the next thing to do is to change out the port on TS host to 8081. That's gonna keep it from colliding with TS remote. And now that that's all done, we can yarn. All right, so let's start that up, and we see two different servers. Pretty quick, that's great. But they both show the same thing, so in order to visually distinguish between those, let's go ahead and change out app.jsx in TS host to say TS host. The same thing over in remote, called TS remote. And now we can get a sense of which one's which. I'm not gonna make this all pretty. This is gonna be a kind of ugly demo, but it is gonna show off what we wanna do. And let's close up some files. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a set of types over in TS Remote. And we're gonna say that we have a Pokemon type with a name and a type, both are strings. And then we have a Pokemon list function, which you give it a name as a filter and it gives you back any Pokemon whose name contains that string. All right, let's go now implement on that. I'm gonna go bring in types and bring in from that Pokemon and Pokemon list function. And I could create my list of Pokemon, including the Bulbasaur of type fire, I guess. I don't know, still don't know. And now we'll create our get list. It has a name filter as a string. And the result of this function is gonna be that Pokemon array filtered down to just Pokemon that include part of the name that you specify as part of that name filter. And then we're gonna type it as a Pokemon list function and export it as a default. Let's jump over to, into app.jsx. And then we're gonna create a new component called Pokemon list view. And we're gonna give it a list of Pokemon to display. And in order to get that list, we're gonna call that get list function and give it bulb, which is gonna you know, match Bulbasaur. We of course don't have that component defined yet, so let's go and build that. It's going to take list, 
and we'll type that list out to be a, an array of Pokemon. And let's bring in that definition for Pokemon. And then we're just going to create a simple table out of it, map through that list, create a row for each item, name and a type. And if we go over to TS Remote, it looks good. Got that Bulbasaur fire there. So the next thing we want to do is expose Pokemon list out. So let's go over to our Webpack config and change out the module federation plugin to have a name of TS Remote. And then expose Pokemon list. Now let's head back over to TS host and now we can consume it. So I'm going to specify in the remotes that the import name here is TS remote dash MF. So not just TS remote, but dash MF. And that way we'll be able to distinguish between the TS remote library and the TS remote as brought in from module federation. So the TS remote that we specify in the value in this key value pair has to match what's coming in from TS remote. And then the remote entry has to match whatever its URL is. So in this case, it's on 8080 as remote entry. So let's start that back up again. And now both are looking good and work. And we've got our remote entry on 8080, so that's looking good. So now in host, we're going to bring in get list from TS remote dash MF. So we're going to bring it in as a federated module. And now we'll just copy out that component, pop it in here. We don't have Pokemon as a type yet, so let's just get rid of that for the time being. And then we'll use it. And it works. So let's go make sure it's actually a live connection by changing out Pokemon list. We'll go and add a new Pokemon called Bulbafu that's, I guess, an Earth type. It shows up immediately on remote because of live reload. And then if I refresh on TS host, it shows up. So, well, good, solid live connection there. That's great. But we get this little red squiggly on TS remote MF Pokemon list. So let's fix that by creating a TS remote MF decal.d.ts file. And we're going to declare that we have that module. So declare module and then give it the exact same name. And then we'll import that, decal, and look, TypeScript is happy, no problems. Great. But if we go over here, right, we can say, well, get list, and we can But if we go over to TS remote, if we change out the value on get list, for example, to like a one, right, now we're getting a TypeScript error. Right, so that's great. That's actually doing the type checking. So we, we want that. So the next thing to do is use our mono repo. Let's close everything up. And then we're going to use yarn workspace to add TS remote at 1.0.0. And you got to put the at 1.0.0 in there. Otherwise, it goes looking on the web for TS remote. That's not going to, you're not going to find anything, I think. I don't know. I haven't looked. Let's add that in there. And that's going to link those two projects together. Now, TS host has an NPM link to TS remote. And we can import the type from TS remote source types. So now you can see why I did the TS remote MF versus TS remote. And we can start typing things. Like I can bring back the type definition on Pokemon list view for the props. And I can do something like get Pokemon list as a Pokemon list function. And now I can get the really cool type hinting on it. And that I think is kind of where a TypeScript ex expert might say, oh, there's a much easier way to do this, but I don't. I don't know what that is, but it works. So let's go see if we can now share out this Pokemon list view. Let's create a new file called Pokemon list view in TS remote. And we'll just kind of trim it down to just the component. 
and then export that as the default. And then let's go back over into the TS Remote app and just import it. All right, looking good. And now let's expose that. So Pokemon list view. And bring up the console and we'll start it again. So now Pokemon list view is also shared. Let's head on over to our TS host and then bring in Pokemon list view from TS remote dash MF Pokemon list view. And great, but do we know that that's really live? So let's go and change this out so we have strong in there for the name of the Pokemon. And it shows up immediately as bold on TS Remote, and that's because of the live reload. Let's head on over to TS Host and refresh, and now we can see it over there. But again, TypeScript is not too happy with this, so let's go and declare that module. And it's much happier about that. Now, if we go back over to TS Remote and we look at this, we can see that it understands what Pokemon list view is. It's got a list, it has to be an array of Pokemon. That's cool. But if I go over into host and I try the same deal, right, we don't get anything, right? What are you talking about? So we need to get a type on that. So let's clean this up a little bit. So let's go over to the types and then we'll create a new type for that stateless component called Pokemon list component. We'll say it has a prop that's list and the type of Pokemon array. And then we'll bring that in from types because we've got that live linkage thanks to the mono repo. So now I'm going to create a new constant value called Pokemon comp that is the Pokemon list view but coerced into Pokemon list component. And now when we look at it, we get proper hinting on it, which is great. So the last thing we're going to do is see if we can externalize the types altogether. Because if you have a larger ecosystem and you have these kind of shared types, maybe you want to do that. So we're going to create a new project in here called Shared Types and just clone it off of TS Remote. And then we're going to go remove most of the contents except for types.ts. And we'll fix up the package JSON. So we have shared types as the name of the library. And now we just want start to just, you know, echo start. We're not going to run a server off this. And we will use yarn to kind of get everything back together. And then we'll add that shared types to each one of our projects, TS host and TS remote. Then we'll set the main to source types. And we can go over and anywhere we have types, we can just start bringing those in from shared types. Excellent. Okay, looking pretty good. I can kind of clean it up a little bit. And we'll start it out. And it looks really great. Now you've got essentially like this new third module that's holding all your type information that is shared between any of your other modules. Okay, so we're using both NPM and module federation. And at the end of this, you're like, wait a second, if I'm using NPM, then why am I just not just doing that? And why am I bringing in module federation? Well, the advantage is the live updating. So in this case, when TS host deploys, the deployed TS uh, host picks that up immediately, right? And you're not gonna get that with NPM. In the NPM world, you'd have to deploy both TS Remote and TS Host to get that new code. All right, if you have a better idea, be sure to fork that repo and put that in the comment section down below so we can have a look at it. And of course, there's a Friday live stream where you can give your feedback. In the meantime, if you like that video, just hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, and you'll be notified the next time one of these videos comes out. In the meantime, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.